Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here with another Battlefield 5 weapon guide for you today. And in this one, we're going to be checking out another gun you get right from the very beginning, the KE-7, which is a light machine gun used by the support class that can fit in pretty well with several different playstyles, being one of the more versatile options in the support's arsenal. Back in the year of 1929, a new select fire light machine gun was born in Switzerland called the KE-7, named using the initials of its two designers. The weapon was the seventh model in a line of rifle and machine gun designs known as the KE series, which spanned over a few years, with the KE-7 being the first one to exit prototype stage and enter production. The gun was made by the Swiss arms manufacturer SIG, though most of the units produced actually went over to China, Latin America and other foreign countries instead of being used by the Swiss military because the KE-7 was a commercial product made for export, rather than a national firearm to be placed in the hands of its native army. The gun was made in several different calibers, most of them being chambered to fire the 8mm Mauser cartridge, like the ones we see in Battlefield 5, mainly to please the Chinese market, with that being the standard cartridge in China at the time. Though of course, with different countries using different bullets, and with the KE-7 being something SIG wanted to sell abroad, other calibers were offered and the gun was tested by several different nations around Europe too. The variety of calibre types affected the rate of automatic fire, with different kinds shooting at slightly different speeds, though most of the KE-7 models were made to use similar looking 25 round box magazines, which were slightly curved in shape and could be slotted into the underside of the gun's receiver. The KE-7 was capable of firing in both fully and semi-automatic, but it didn't actually have any sort of select fire toggle. It instead used a system that's more common in SMGs, where single shots could be fired by a short trigger pull, and a longer trigger pull would switch the gun over to full auto, something rarely seen in most light machine gun designs. The KE-7 was actually submitted to trials run by the British Army in 1930 to replace the Lewis gun, though it was never adopted. The weapon was still manufactured in Switzerland though, and was done so for another eight years, until production ended a year before the war began in 1938. So anyway, time to run over the stats, with the lethality section coming up first. The KE-7 is a pretty good gun to use when it comes to killing fairly quickly. It deals a maximum damage of 25 in close quarters, though at the range of 10 meters, this damage will start to drop off, becoming weaker the further your bullets travel through the air. Damage drops down to 20 at 50 meters, but then slopes off a bit more gradually from here, eventually reaching the gun's minimum damage value of 18.5 at 75 meters and beyond. These are pretty similar figures to a lot of the other support LMGs, like the Bren and the Lewis gun, and so you're going to be able to kill in 4 shots up close, though it'll take up to 6 to bring someone down further away. This is also kind of similar to the assault automatic weapons like the Sterngewehr, which deals slightly less damage over range. Not enough damage to really separate the two types massively though, as the KE-7 only dishes out 1.5 extra damage at its minimum value, technically only giving its rounds a tiny bit more stopping power beyond 50 meters. The number of shots required to kill don't really vary much between the two weapon types, as landing a headshot further away is still going to allow you to kill in one less bullet, just like with the assault rifles, though it just might make it easier to take out already weakened enemies in the distance, which can sometimes give the LMGs a slight advantage. Though the main thing to point out when looking at how lethal the KE-7 is comes down to its rate of fire, which, at its base speed, shoots at 568 RPM, not too shabby at all as this puts it higher than both the Bren and the Lewis gun, letting it kill even quicker. This fire rate can be boosted an extra 70 RPM, up to 638 RPM, by applying the light bolt specialization. So of course, this is going to make it even deadlier still, putting it a little bit closer to the FG-42. Not quite enough to beat it however, as the FG-42 will still be the faster firing weapon of the two, but this will at least bridge the gap a bit more, making the KE-7 a very dangerous gun to wield, nevertheless. So when it comes down to the KE-7's accuracy, its fairly moderate recoil pattern means that it can stray off target with prolonged fire quite easily, though this can be managed by bursting your shots in smaller groupings when taking on targets further away. The KE-7 kicks upwards with a value of 0.65, which is just a tiny bit lower than the Bren, and it's got a horizontal value of 0.225, so it's got a similar sort of accuracy to the Lewis gun. Neither of these figures are particularly high, though they still don't exactly make the gun a very precise thing to use in full auto fire, so tapping the trigger is still going to be a pretty effective way to take on enemies in the distance. Though with the KE-7 having access to a bipod, you can drastically improve the gun's accuracy and stability over range, allowing you to stay on target easier when holding down that trigger. 
Recoil and spread can be improved by applying certain specialisations though, as the ported barrel is going to reduce that horizontal recoil down to 0.15, which will match its left and rightwards values up quite nicely with the Bren. This will boost the gun's precision and allow you to land more shots on target in the process, generally making it an easier thing to use. A nice benefit for engaging enemies further away too, especially with the KE-7 having a relatively nippy fire rate, which will now seem a bit more manageable. Bumping the rate of fire up with the light bolt is going to make the KE-7's recoil more noticeable, with recoil increasing slightly more after each shot fired. And so, although it'll kill faster, this is something you'll have to take into account. Should you choose to boost the weapon's fire rate, you might find that shooting in very short bursts or even just tapping the trigger is the best way to handle with that extra recoil, especially if your target is over a medium to long range, using hip fire more often in close quarter combat, with the enhanced grips option equipped on the same path too. Well, so far we've established that the KE-7 can put players down pretty effectively, without its recoil posing too much of a problem in a lot of cases. But as far as reliability goes, it's not exactly the most dependable LMG in the class. Because you'll be playing as support, you'll automatically spawn in with maximum ammo available, which in the KE-7's case is 100 rounds, equating to 4 detachable box magazines with each mag holding a total of 25 bullets. For a light machine gun, 25 shots per reload isn't really all that much. It's usually enough to take on two or three players at a time, but you're not going to be able to comfortably take on many more, should you get thrown into an awkward situation and get yourself surrounded. Because the gun fires quite quickly and can potentially shoot even faster through specialisations, this means that you're going to burn through ammo at a faster rate than a lot of the other guns, so more bullets are likely to be wasted with them being forced out at a rate which is harder to control and moderate. Not to mention the fact that you're going to need to reload more frequently, with your ammo being dispensed quicker too. These factors make those 25 round mags even less ideal for the job or supporting the LMG role, though it's not quite as bad as the FG42 which shoots a bit faster and has an even smaller capacity still. To make matters worse, the KE-7 also happens to have a pretty sluggish reload, with both its tactical and empty reloads taking 3.75 seconds to perform. This isn't really a massive problem regarding its empty reloads, which is a similar kind of speed to a few of the other guns like the Bren but 3.75 seconds for a tactical reload is pretty bad as far as automatic weapons go, as it's the slowest of all the base game LMGs. Though this can be sped up a bit by using the quick reload specialisation, reducing reload times down to an improved 3.19 seconds, making it slightly faster than the Lewis gun. So it doesn't exactly make the KE-7 a lot more reliable, but it'll at least help to make you a bit less vulnerable in between gunfights. Taking a look at the specialisations now, the KE-7 actually has a pretty good balance of choices that nicely help to ramp up the weapon's performance in terms of lethality, accuracy and reliability. The first two you'll be met with is the quick reload and quick aim specialisations that are both going to help to make the gun a bit more dependable. The quick aim option is a good one that will help to give you a slight edge in gunfights, though I'd naturally choose the quick reload specialisation instead just to help try and counter the weapon's glaringly long reload animations, which is one of the main negative factors the KE-7 has. As for the middle section of the tree, running down the left side is going to benefit aggressive players more, increasing the gun's rate of fire and giving its hipfire accuracy a boost, whereas the right side is mainly going to help to improve the KE-7's precision and improve its accuracy while strafing around in ADS. Because I tend to prefer using offensive tactics and like to fight closer to all the action, I find that the quicker fire rate and better hip fire makes the gun a lot more useful within close to mid ranges, especially around objective points that are being contested. You'll be able to drop players much faster, and providing you tap and burst fire the gun to keep it stable against players further away, I find that the left side has the better choices for me. With that said, the right side is also pretty good, with the gun already firing quite fast at its base RPM, as it'll often make it easier to land more shots over distance while firing in longer durations. This might be more ideal if you want to sacrifice a bit of power for accuracy, perhaps a better choice if you tend to play a bit more passive aggressively. As for the final part of the tree, the two options we're left with are the light and stock and barrel bedding specialisations. Light and stock is going to give you more manoeuvrability whilst aiming, whereas the barrel bedding is going to improve your accuracy whilst being still. I'd probably opt for the barrel bedding out of these two, just to help you out when taking on players further away. Though if you've chosen to run down the right side of the tree, the light and stock might benefit you more, nicely complementing the custom stock specialisation, which gives you better accuracy whilst moving around. So anyway, in conclusion, 
The KE-7 is a bloody good weapon to kick off your time with a support class, because it's got a fairly nice balance between its factors, being both reasonably deadly and accurate to a certain degree. It's capable of dropping players quicker than a lot of the other automatic weapons in the game, especially if you boost its fire rate, and it's also able to stay on target without too many problems either, providing you reserve full auto fire for closer quarters only that is. The bigger issues you're likely going to encounter is mainly down to the gun's inability to keep you going through the fight reliably, as a 25 round mag is not exactly going to get you very far, especially with those bullets being discharged so quickly. When you are running low on ammo, the AE7's longer than average reloads are also something that might create some problems within hectic situations in CQC. Not really a brilliant thing to be met with if you happen to get yourself surrounded by an enemy squad. Due to the way specialisations can be used to boost all aspects of the gun, it can fit in well with a wide variety of playstyles, being a pretty strong passive-aggressive gun that can do well over most ranges, depending on your choices. Some of the KE-7's negatives can be improved, and its stronger factors boosted even further, allowing it to be both versatile and deadly. Though the gun in general is going to cater towards offensive play a bit more than a few of the other LMGs, being the hard-hitting weapon that it is. And overall, the KE-7 is going to be a great weapon to use for most players for this reason, as it can be a bit of a pushover in close to medium ranges, just as long as you take its reloads into account, without getting too ballsy of course. So that's it for another Battlefield 5 weapon guide folks, hope you enjoyed it. Give me a like if you did, and subscribe to see loads more coming out in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next episode.